Welcome to day three of this license class. We're going to be looking at electrical principles. When you got your technician license, you learned about resistance. When you got your general ticket, you had an introduction to reactants. Now we will combine resistance and reactance to find impedance. We begin with a math review. A squared is A times A. For example, 3 squared equals 3 times 3, which equals 9. The inverse of that is the square root of A. If A is equal to 9, then the square root of 9 is 3. Now let's review Pythagorean's theorem. If you have a triangle with one corner equal to 90 degrees, you have a right triangle. If you know the length of two sides of the right triangle, you can calculate the hypotenuse, the length of the third side, by calculating the square root of the sum of the squares of the two sides that you know. For instance, if one side is 2 and the second side is 3 units long, then 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 9 plus 4 is 13. The hypotenuse, or r, is equal to the square root of 13. There are some particular right triangles that show up frequently, such as if the sides are 3 and 4, the hypotenuse will be 5, because 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 16 plus 9 is 25, the square root of 25 is 5. So that's known as the 3, 4, 5 right triangle. Layouts like that show up frequently on exams. Another right triangle that shows up frequently on exams is the 5, 12, 13 right triangle. If one side is 5, 5 squared is 25. If the second side is 12, 12 squared is 144. 144 plus 25 equals 169. The square root of 169 is 13. So that is known as the 5, 12, 13 right triangle. Now let's take a look at the tangent angle. In a right triangle, if you know the length of two of the sides, you can calculate either of the two interior angles. Remember, the third angle is given as 90 degrees. For instance, if one side on the y-axis, the rise is equal to 2, and the second side on the x-axis, the run is equal to 3, then the angle that you see there is equal to the arctangent of the rise over the run, which means the angle equals the arctangent of y over x, or the angle is equal to the arctangent of 2 divided by 3, which means the angle is the arctangent of 0.666, which is, according to your calculator, 33.66 degrees. While we're on the subject of tangent angles, if you have a right triangle where two of the sides are the same length, for instance, 1 and 1, or 5 and 5, then the hypotenuse will be 1.414 times the length of one of the sides, and the two interior angles will each be 45 degrees. This configuration shows up frequently in homework and test questions. For instance, on this slide, you see a y value of 1 and an x value of 1. The square root of the sum of the squares, the hypotenuse, is 1.414. That interior angle is equal to the arctangent of the rise over the run, which is the arctangent of 1 divided by 1, which is the arctangent of the number 1 which, according to the calculator, is 45 degrees. Other terms that we will use are log to the base 10, log to the base e, 
the number pi, which equals 3.14159 etc., and the square root of minus 1, for which we will use the term j. And now the rectangular coordinate system. There are several ways to represent the location of a point in space. One is the conventional x-y coordinate system, known as the rectangular coordinate system. Each point has an x and a y coordinate, such as x equals 3 and y equals 5. That would be the pair 3, 5, or another point, minus 2, minus 4. Another equally good way to specify those same points in space is with the polar coordinate system. Every point has a length from the origin to the point and an angle from the x-axis. By the way, up is a positive angle and down is a negative angle. An example would be 5.83 at an angle of 59 degrees, or 4.5 at an angle of 243.4 degrees. We can use a variation of the rectangular coordinate system to help us with complex numbers. The axes are labeled plus x and minus x, but the y-axes are labeled plus j and minus j. For instance, one point could be 3 plus j5, and another point minus 2 minus j4. You need to know how to convert rectangular coordinates to polar. First, you must calculate the hypotenuse to get the distance from the origin to the point 3, 5. In this case, the square root of the sum of the squares of 3 and 5 is a radius of 5.8301. Next, we calculate the angle, that is, the arctangent of the rise over the run. In this case, the rise is 3, the run, excuse me, the rise is 5, the run is 3. So we need the arctangent of 5 divided by 3, which is 59.03 degrees. Here are our two points again in the polar coordinate system. In the polar coordinate system, we specify the location of a point with a radius from the origin and the angle from the x-axis. And now electrical fields. A capacitor is a good example of an electrical field. We have positive charges on one side of the capacitor negative charges on the other side, and a dielectric and insulator in between the two. There is an electric field between the two plates of the capacitor. A bar magnet is a good example of a magnetic field. You have lines of force going between the north and south poles of the bar magnet. Here we have electrical energy stored in the capacitor until the switch is thrown from position A to position B. When the switch is in position A, we will have electrons stored on one side of the capacitor and protons stored on the other side of the capacitor. Here we have magnetic energy stored in the air around the bar magnet 